There are four things a Krieger needs. His bayonet, his entrenching tool, his las gun, and an enemy to throw himself into the meat grinder against. Praise be the Emperor, we've got all four in Dark Tide, so today we're going to talk about one of the most unique and stylish weapons in the Dark Tide arsenal, the Lucius Pattern las gun. Now, the Death Corps of Krieg are a famously stoic and faceless regiment, known for their World War I aesthetic, their rebreather gas masks, and their uncompromising approach to warfare. Almost 2,000 years before the current timeline, their homeworld entered open rebellion against the Imperium of Man, and was sundered in two. On one side of the conflict, the High Autocrat declared martial law and seceded from the Emperor's light, while the heavily outnumbered Loyalists declared that if the planet couldn't remain in Imperial hands, it would exist for no one. Atomic bombardment followed, and as firestorms raged across the surface and nuclear winter descended, 500 years of brutal civil war began. And thus, the Death Corps of Krieg were born, siege and trench warfare specialists, bred for combat in the most hostile of environments, and desperate to atone for their historic betrayal. If you think of anything that characterizes the First World War, from creeping barrages to tank advances, chemical warfare, bayonet charges and close quarters fighting from trench to trench, the Death Corps embody that, and the Lucius Pattern Lasgun is their signature weapon. It packs more punch than the standard issue Lasguns of other worlds, but is designed for the same power pack which means it drains more quickly, and is more likely to overheat, which is why the barrel's lined with coils as an additional heat sink. In Dark Tide, this weapon does not overheat, but it does have a slower fire rate than the Cantrail or Actran patterns, and it also has a unique overcharge mechanic that winds up for a single devastating shot, at the cost of more ammo. The Lucius is built for raw single target damage and fantastic iron sights, which give it a great sight picture, and allow it to target weak points and burst through HP very efficiently, when in the hands of a good player. It feels like a weapon designed for experts, one with a very high skill ceiling, but one that can be an active detriment to the team when not used appropriately, perhaps more so than other choices. Plus, it has the added benefit of an affixed bayonet, one that can actually be quite decent against single ambient enemies, and simply if you want to roleplay, charging an emplacement with your homies and shaking a squad to death is one of the most entertaining things you can do in Dark Tide. I don't know what a Krieger would scream on the way in, Maybe they're really quiet when they go into combat, but if we can find a nice shout out, that might be cool. Maybe just a standard for the Emperor. So, starting at rank 8, the Lucius Pattern Last Gun can become available in the weapon exchange for Veteran Sharpshooter, with additional marks and variants hitting by rank 17. And it's an interesting one, because there are some pretty obvious downsides to this weapon as well. Its major weakness is that suppression can absolutely ruin it, to a greater extent than many other weapons, because it relies so heavily on precision and timing. If you take the time to fully charge a shot, and then a deluge of bullets hits around you and the weapon sway kicks in, causing you to miss, you wasted more time and more ammo than you would have with many other options. And if there's one thing that characterizes higher difficulties in Dark Tide, it's being suppressed by squads of drags and scabs. So one talent you might benefit tremendously from is Camo Expert at rank 20, where standing still means you are much less likely to be targeted by enemy guns. This will give you more time to line up your shots, and quickly pick off specials and gunners while you overcharge and pop them in the head. Now one talent you might want to try out, but ultimately avoid, is the sniper talent at level 10, which is definitely something you should try out for yourself, but it may end up being a bit of a trap, even if it does seem like it should synergize with the rest of your kit. Up to 20% extra damage per shot sounds amazing on paper, but the problem is that you typically won't be at ranges where you can make full use of that damage, and damage is not something the Lucius lacks anyway. Not having that grenade regen passive at level 10 can severely limit your clutch and run saving potential. A free grenade every minute will soften up armor and hyperdensity, it can clear gobs of enemies wailing on a downed ally, it can be thrown directly at your feet to create space and give yourself room to make plays, you simply get less value and utility out of the extra damage from Sniper in the majority of circumstances in my opinion. I think the grenade talent is just straight up better, but of course you can still make Sniper do work for you if you play around it, and I think it's worth trying out all the same. The good thing is that Kree Grenadiers are very common, so you're not hurting the thematics here by going for grenade replenishment. A couple other issues it has to deal with are the annoying switching mechanic, which apparently exists for balance purposes on the more powerful ranged weapons, where pistols and submachine guns will instantly deploy, but bolt guns and plasma and the Lucius take longer to take out and set up. Frankly, I do think that makes sense, even if the way they go about it maybe isn't the most logical one, it is satisfying to rack the bolt or the charging handle on the bolt gun and is probably more satisfying than just flicking the safety, but it is annoying to do every single time you take it out. 
And in the case of this pattern, the safety has to be flicked on every single time you take a Lucius pattern las gun out of your pocket. The other problem it runs into is that it can't be kept fully charged. It will let loose and potentially waste ammo if there's nothing to shoot and you fully charge. So the way you get around this is by canceling the animation by switching to your melee weapon. If you fully charged it and your target has ducked back into cover. All that switching and safety flicking can leave you a bit exposed if you're not mindful of your positioning. With that said, the Lucius is capable of incredible accuracy and damage output in the hands of a skilled player, and is one of those weapons that can become very satisfying to get good with. Not to mention you don't have to grind for 15 hours to finally unlock it. So today, we're going to throw caution and self-preservation to the wind and go into a random pub game armed with our entrenchment tool and fancy las gun, roleplay as a death corp Krieger, and demonstrate a disturbing disregard for our own survival. And by that I mean backline like a boss and snipe everything we see on screen from a very safe distance away. But we'll get some knife work in too. Enjoy the gameplay and commentary and enjoy your Thanksgiving tomorrow if you celebrate and I'll see you guys soon. Oh, the cleansing of the water. Truly, this is holy work. Woo, beautiful weapon. We're going full regalia here. Fully kitted out. Full roleplay, Deathcore Krieg style. Lucius Pattern Lasgun. And a combat shovel or entrenchment tool, as it's known in 40k, I believe. I would not be shocked at all if a Deathcore Krieg style skin is one of the first to hit the premium workshop or store once Dark Tide is fully released. I don't know what they have planned for skins on the paid side of things. Obviously, they're going to release some. Cosmetics have been a thing in Vermintide since Loner's Emporium at least, but of course they had skins back in Vermintide 1 as well, so nothing new. Frankly, I think they'd just be leaving money on the table without doing premium skins, because you know 40k nerds are going to eat that shit right up. <laughs> Do not have any modifiers on this run, I don't believe. This is Malice 3. It's really the only difficulty, the highest difficulty I'd feel comfortable with running with pubs. Uh, if I'm gonna be playing four or five, I, I want a full squad, 100%. It's hard enough, even with communication. Without it, it's uh, kind of a shit show. And that is the Lucius. This particular mark has a faster charge rate, I believe, than some of the others. It's very satisfying to fully charge that thing and quickly snap it onto heads. Get five, six headshots in a row. And then we can do this, we can go with the bayonet and chop people's heads off with stabs at point blank range. So if you see maulers, you want to go for body shots, of course. With super armor on their head. You see that little shh? That's when enemies are trying to backstab or hit you from a flank or rear. So that will warn you, give you time to dodge. This is being played when the first patch went live. Uh, only a few hours after, actually. So that does mean there are a few dodge nerfs and other things that have hit. I believe the grenade talent was nerfed as well from 45 seconds to 60. But uh, still, I think it's the best in, in class at level 10. Super good talent, and that was a dirty ass shot. Oh my god. Alright, can you stop? Very obnoxious. Oh no, Bartholomew! My friend! This is our stuff. Yeah, dodging snipers has got to be one of my favorite things to do in this game. It makes me just feel super badass. Homie Zealot is back up. Remember, these are pubs. Do not know them. I am not talking to them. As we start talking to you guys. So we'll see how things go. 78, the body dies. Kill confirmed on the big That was cool. 
Got a bulwark behind still. Wow. Okay. I actually wasn't expecting that. Main entrance is a no go. I haven't figured out the perfect balance between when you should go for a fully charged versus when you should just spam the light. I think generally you want to charge it up. But there are times where you just want to get that suppression in or you want to blow up a barrel. A lot of explosive barrels around, man. It's some silly FPS trope. Like, why is everything explosive on every single one of these maps? And they're actually pretty annoying in this game too. The physics with them are weird. They'll knock over in like 20 or 30 feet sometimes and explode in the wrong way. Like you'll be walking one direction and then get exploded. I don't know. It's very strange. The physics for it are very, very bizarre. Poor quality mass habitation spaces. Perfect place for corruption to grow. I am not level 20 yet, so I don't have that talent that will let me stand still. The, the camo powder that lets me not get shot at by enemies. I think that'll be probably quite good for this weapon. I think it'll benefit more than a lot of others. Simply because you're so reliant on charging that up to get your DPS in and your accuracy needs to be good. Much more so than with the Cantrell. Plasma Boy just got shanked in the butthole, so we'll save him. We got a hard cover. They're dropping from above. We got a Pox Walker horde behind. So yeah, me and uh, Zealot will deal with this. Hopefully they'll be able to deal with the room and not pull too much stuff in. That can be a danger in and of itself. You don't want to... Pulling enemies to a safer location is really smart, but sometimes you can do it too early and kind of get yourself overwhelmed. Pace is important, but we do want to take our time here. Especially with pumps. Verily. Verily, I will shank you with my bayonet. And we got a plague owner, okay. Yeah, you can see that suppression kicking in. As it should against a Reaper. I would think they're carrying auto cannons, because Reaper auto cannon is something that the uh, Chaos Forces use. But maybe it's just a uh, twiddling heavy stubborn. I'm not sure. If anyone knows in the comment section, drop it for me. I haven't inspected the weapon, so I'm not actually positive. I'm gonna duck back into cover here. Lemiri looks to be on her last legs. Okay, best way to deal with a boss. With the Lucius is headshots for days, obviously. At least against the Plague Ogre. So we spot his head and maybe the cylinder in the back. I haven't confirmed that yet. Learn, Got it. But fully charged into the head would be really good. Can't do it right now though, because we got Hargrave getting knocked off the map. I'm just trying to get aggro right now. Normally I'd be fully charging, but to see if frequency of shots is going to help here. It doesn't seem to be. Now that it's turned, we can fully charge. It is moving a lot. This is where having an ogre would be really useful. Just have him charge it and stun it. We got him. Damn. Team got its ass beat. Get your ammo, my dude. Okay. We are alive. That is better than the alternative. Hey! 
I like that a lot. Today. All right, so this is a coming engagement where the Lucius will shine quite a bit, I think. When they're funneled into that natural choke point on the bridge, and we got long lines of sight. It's always a weird one, though, because there's a bunch of gunners on the other side, and if they start suppressing you, you're going to miss a lot of your shots. <laughs> And they will have snipers as well. Yeah, you can see the weapon play gets real bad when they start shooting back at you. Take your corruption from this place, mutants. There's a sniper up. Dumb. Not my finest Watch moment. We're getting wrecked. All right, geez. <laughs> Thank you. I thought, yeah, this will be a great fight for me. And then I messed up my shots. Feast or famine with this weapon. Oh, that is cinematic as hell. Yeah, this is one of the coolest events of the game right now. It's straight out of a movie. I don't like the grenade physics in this game right now. They don't bounce appropriately at all, especially when they have a lot of momentum you're throwing far away. It's very weird, like you can chuck it hard at your feet and it just won't bounce or move forward at all. It just kind of dies wherever it hits. They also kind of have wimpy arms. Straight up noodle arm throws. Half the time I throw nades, you have to like be looking really high up in the air for a grenade to go anywhere. Probably use a little bit of work. You can play around it, it's not like the biggest deal in the world, but it, it can be annoying to chuck in a grenade at like a normal angle and then it's just like, not. Nah. I don't play those games to be. Goes like 10 feet. Enemy Sexy looking gun though, dude. I love this mark, this pattern of last gun. It's, it's really fun to use. Performing pretty well. But it is one of those weapons where it's like pretty much all user controlled, right? Like some weapons you kind of just mindlessly just go in and you'll you'll dominate with. Uh, there are a few ranged weapons in the game right now that are <laughs> pretty crazy. Uh, this is not one of them. This one requires some thinking and some positioning and some some talent, which I can appreciate. Well, there's gonna be juicy nades. Shot we only get that guy. There's a lot of hot shot lads. Oh, buddy. Take a 
One thing I will say, it feels like the suppression and proximity mechanics need a bit of work right now. Uh, obviously, lots of things in Dark Tide need work at the moment. <laughs> but, oh, that was a oh, juicy name. Um, it feels like you can close them down in melee. And especially with classes like Zealot, it can feel really punishing and ridiculous when... Uh, I'm over here, by the way. Come get it, you nerds. Uh, it can feel really punishing when you, like, actually make it in. Uh, especially on Heresy 4 or Damnation 5. And then, like, three or four or eight of the Laz Patrol will, like, kind of just back away and start shooting you. Even though you're in range. Might as well grab it. He's not, they're not going to take it from me. Um... It just sucks, right? It's like, what are you gonna do if you fully commit your ult, you get in, and you've done what you're supposed to do, which is close them down into melee range, and then they're supposed to take out their melee weapons and not use their las guns, but then they just like back away two feet from you and suddenly they're shooting again. Then you just get stun locked and you can't move and you just freaking die. Like, that's not really a skill issue. That's not really the player's fault. That's just the mechanic not quite working the way it's supposed to, I don't think. And it feels the same with suppression right now. There are a lot of times where you can shoot a lot of shots towards he's, enemies he's and they'll just keep shooting at you. Right so there needs to be maybe a little bit more readability and a bit more reaction from enemies to, you know, do what they're supposed to do when you're using these new mechanics. Because all, all the mechanics are, like, really well thought out. They're good ideas. Uh, implementation still needs a little bit of work and that maybe they're not fully working the way they're supposed to. I really like this run. I think it's probably one of my favorite maps in the game of all the ones I've played. And I think at this point I've played most of them. With that early access build. This one in particular, this is kind of like veteran sharpshooter's dream right here. Long sightlines. Where I can't hit a shot because I'm bad. And my teammates are getting wrecked. The navy should be safe. Your days are numbered, Buster. Yeah, I don't know why they're not picking up ammo. I keep trying to get them to pick up, but they don't seem to want it. Seven eight. The body dies. Seven eight. The body dies. I don't really want to be near that guy. He's big and scary. I don't like him. Oh god. Oh, man, that time! We're going to work! Alright, we're gonna need to do that before that end of this game if we can. Just, char just straight up charge people with bayonets. If they do a Death Corps of Krieg skin, one of the first things I'm gonna do is get a full squad. We're all gonna get the skin, and we're just gonna straight up run at people. And full on roleplay, full on like voice act it. I don't even know what a Krieger would sound like or what they would say. But straight up for the Emperor, shovel charge, bayonet charge, and just YOLO. Send it. And the video has to end with all of us dying a glorious death. Is that is that glory about Civil War where Morgan Freeman and the uh, Union soldiers charge one of the, the Confederate forts? And the end of the movie is them like turning a corner. There's a gigantic freaking cannon pointed at them, and then they, the movie just ends. And you know they all die. I think that's glory. It was also glorious, me dropping grenades from on. I just hit that dude in the face with the name. Oh my god, I'm so good at this game. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just straight up charge into Reapers and enemy hotshot fire.
Dude, that plasma looks so satisfying. I want it. Yeah, the, the grind right now is a bit brutal. I'm not going to lie. The, uh, the XP per level and completion is not as rewarding probably as it should be. And it probably takes too long. 25 hours to fully level a class, I think, is, is a bit much. Um, it, it might get better on full release because... This, this hour's done. Can't shoot that guy. Um, it might get better at full release because they don't want people to like experience the entire game yet in pre-order, which makes sense to an extent. Stay together, homies. But yeah, I think a hundred hours to get four level thirties is a bit ridiculous. And and it wouldn't feel so bad if. All of the cool stuff wasn't gated, like, past level 15, which in and of itself takes eight, nine hours, probably. And it only gets worse from there. One thing I have continuously tried to stress to them is, like, and people have brought the topic up before, of course, people aren't playing the time games for the grind. Like, the fun of these games is when you are leveled and can build how you want to build. And that's where the replayability comes in. I don't want to spend 15 hours using, like, a basic Focus fire. Hi. combat knife, right? If I'm playing Psyker, I don't want to play for 15 hours to get my first staff. One reason why I don't like the RNG shop all that much. I mean, a lot of reasons why. <laughs> well, I think I made it pretty clear the uh, the core combat and core gameplay loop of Dark Tide is freaking awesome. And I uh, foresee myself playing this for a very long time. What is th what is that? That happened to me earlier today. What is that? It's so a weird bug. But of course, that will be predicated on Fat Shark supporting the game well and you know fixing problems, which I think they will. But I don't know if it's gonna be like. Well, it's definitely not gonna be anywhere near perfect at release. I'll say that. <laughs> right. Uh, let's group up. Not bad. Not bad with the pubs. Um, had a, had a few issues. Had a, had a few downs on the homies. But uh, they handled malice all right here. I've seen and experienced much worse. My favorite is when I get yelled at. One thing that's really funny is that usually people who are newer to the game are more likely to be toxic because they don't fully understand the game's mechanics. Like people who play Kata are usually pretty chill. Like they've been playing for a long time, they don't care about the loot, all that. But some of the lower levels will get like very angry about certain stuff. I love getting yelled at by like people who are like level two or three. Like, why didn't you do X? And I'm like, because well, that, that would have been stupid. Because you don't know what you're talking about because you're new to the game, which is fine. But I have always noticed it. It happened in Dota as well. Uh, there's like that period where you think you're good at the game, but you're not actually good at the game yet. Where you think you can boss people around and yell at them and whatever. This is how it's done. And it just it gets funny because like, once you get past that, you kind of chill out again. But a uh, champion difficulty, I think, was the difficulty I experienced that most on uh, Vermin Side, where it's just like a ton of toxicity from players who think they're good but aren't actually. Of course, there are also very good players who are dickheads too. But...
generally, I think you run into that less the higher difficulties you go. Cool little escape here as well. Let's get out of here, boys. Get to the chopper! That is fun. That is the Lucius and the Entrenchment Tool. Straight up Krieg style. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And uh, with any luck, we will get some really cool themed 40k cosmetics. Because I would definitely love to go full regalia, like with the gas mask and all that stuff. GG. See y'all in the next one.